mean, some of these nonprofits that we're working with are literally saving lives, right? And so that revenue is so important to do that. And so we feel that urgency and it makes us want to scurry and act fast. But sometimes we just need to slow down and be strategic and set a pace because we're not running a sprint here. I like to say leadership, especially nonprofit leadership, is not a marathon as some people say it is, but it's not a sprint. I like to say it's a marathon of sprints. Being a leader of a nonprofit organization is not for the faint of heart. It really takes a lot of guts to be a leader in a nonprofit world today. Hi, I'm Jim Dempsey, and welcome to the Development Effectiveness Strategies and the Jim and Java program. We've got a great guest today by the name of Dr. Sheila Cornia. Sheila is an expert on leadership. She has helped to run numerous nonprofit organizations, and she's trained up countless leaders. She's going to bring some great messages today in regard to things that you can do to help be a good leader, provide an environment that fosters other leaders to come up, and what we can do to recruit leaders, including board members. So I think you're gonna really enjoy the message that Sheila's gonna bring us today. Uh, Sheila, I wanna start out right away finding out a little bit about your story. So for our viewers, would you please share your story with us? Thank you for, for asking me that, Jim. I love sharing my story because it started so far back when I was a little girl, maybe eight years old. And at that time, I was enamored with my superhero, the only superhero I've ever really loved, who was the original Wonder Woman, Linda Carter. She was just the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen and so kind but strong at the same time. And I found myself in a small town, South Carolina, little church. And here comes out one of our teachers for the summer, Miss Linda. And she looked just like Wonder Woman, tall, slender, brown hair, big doe, brown eyes. And she just hung the moon when she walked in. She had so much love, but she had this way of pushing all of the kids in the direction she thought they should go. And that summer we had been working, we were to work on a program for the parents with the end of the summer pageant. And we, it was full of music and little skits and things. And when we started planning parts, she said, okay, I would like the Brown sisters to do this trio. I just, I looked at her. I said, I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't do that. And she, Miss Linda looked at me with so much love and she said, you're going to be fine. Your sisters are going to be right there with you. You can do this. I believe you can do it. You're going to be great. And you know, I just trusted her confidence in me. And I got up on the stage. We did our parts. I was scared to death, but I didn't die. <laughs> and I think that's kind of my story of leadership. Most of the time I'm scared to death, but I have proven that I won't die. <laughs> and it all goes back to Miss Linda. And I didn't know it at the time, but that moment made me fall in love with leadership and kind leadership and seeing potential in other people. That's really where it started. Well, a number of our viewers are leaders of nonprofits. You've been a leader of a nonprofit. You teach and coach leaders. What would you say are some of the keys to successful leaders? Well, I have kind of tried to narrow it down to five keys. Uh, I call them five acts of gutsy grace leadership. I believe that if you're going to leave a non lead a nonprofit, you really do have to have what I call gutsy grace. Uh, it, it's going to take some guts to really lead a nonprofit. And yet you also have to have grace because you're not leading through coercion or power or authority. Usually you're leading by influence and uh, serving others, right? Uh, but yet you still have to make some real tough calls. And so I've kind of narrowed it down to five areas. The first is authenticity. Um, I I could go into a long story about authenticity and how I, I learned that the wrong way, uh, the hard way. I was trying to please everyone around me and it just wasn't working. But the more authentic I became, the easier it became. So I just always believe you have to start there in, you know, in your own makeup, in your own design and who you really are and what you're really uh, drawn to do or called to do. Um, 
a community builder. If you're a nonprofit, you have to be a community builder. You just have to, or you're not going to make it. <laughs> uh, you probably also want to be a community builder or you wouldn't be a nonprofit, right? Um, tenacity is also very important. Uh, not giving up and not giving in. Strategy, which is one of my favorite things to talk to nonprofit leaders about because many of us are heart led. And strategy sometimes bumps into that compassion. Um, so I think strategy is a key component of it. And then savvy. Uh, I think of savvy as like your toolkit. Uh, all of the others are tools and savvy is knowing which tool to grab at the right time. Well, you know, so many of our leaders, and I hear this often, certainly they want to build up their bench of future leaders, but what are some of the things that you would recommend to kind of build up the next generation of leaders? Well, one of the things that I like to do is I like to always have my, uh, my dad was Marine and he said, keep your head on a swivel a lot. And uh, so I try to keep my head on a swivel and look out for those people that I think have leadership potential. And even if they are a reluctant leader, Sometimes I'm still watching them and I am giving them mentoring opportunities without even telling them sometimes. And so sometimes I will mentor through delegation and see, do they grab onto it and do they want to grow? So I'm usually looking for three main characteristics when I'm looking for a future leader or an aspiring leader. Um, one is that they're caring. Um, to me, it doesn't matter how skillful you are. If you're not a caring person, no one's going to want to work with you. Work that they're doing and also about the people they're doing it with and for. Second is competence. You, you know, again, you can be very caring, but if you don't have the skills to carry out the work that you're assigned to do, then that's going to be problematic. However, usually you can learn the skills. And so competency or willing to become more competent in their work. And then the third area is curiosity. And uh, some people might call this growth mindset, really being curious about what, what else can we do? What more can we do? What's the next thing? If, if I can find a, that tri, triage or tri, triad of people, um, that's really going to really be the good foundation for leadership uh, because they have the willingness to learn new skills. They're building their skills and they care about the work that they're doing and the people they're serving. And that to me is the, like the trifecta that I'm looking for. Well, if, if you're a, a leader on the lookout for other leaders, what, would, what are some of the things that you would do to help to recruit uh, prospective leaders? Well, you know, a lot of times I hear nonprofit leaders saying it's hard to find leaders or it's hard to find board members or um, that kind of thing, or even hard to find really quality staff members. I don't think that it's hard to find them. I think that the challenge for us is attracting them and empowering them. Really great leaders are not going to be drawn to your organization unless they really feel like they can contribute at a high, their highest level. I want to ask you, if, if I'm a nonprofit leader, uh, I want to separate myself from other organizations, probably feel like I'm the best kept secret out there that I just wish more people knew about who our organization was. What would you recommend for the organization trying to set themselves apart or cut above other nonprofit organizations. Well, that's, that's like the pain of my heart to hear a nonprofit leader say we're the best kept secret because I want you to be top of mind. You know, as, as a nonprofit and you're doing good in the world, I want you to be top of not mind, not best kept secret. Um, one of the things that I find with nonprofits is really their ability to focus in very tightly on their mission. And uh, uh, one of the answers I get most often when I say, what, what do you do in your nonprofit? I get, well, we want to help people. Well, that's pretty broad. So, you know, we have to narrow that down. What kind of people do you want to help? And what do you, how do you want to help them? And get it down to what problem are you really solving? So I want to work with them to keep narrowing down, to, you know, get to what is that the core problem that they're finding is a common uh, commonality around the people that they're serving 
that they're actually trying to solve and that will inform their mission. Yeah, that I, I, I find that that's such a challenge because you talk to leadership, you talk to board, you talk to staff, you talk to volunteers, they all have a different definition for what the organization does and who they are. So it's so good. Yeah. Yes. And that common language is necessary. Um, you know, I worked with a nonprofit board once um, I was consulting with them. And whenever I asked the board members and the staff and the constituents, the same question of how do they, how do you help people or how do they help you? They all had different answers. And that was one of their main, that was their core issue was they had no identity because they had every identity. Well, our goal for this channel is to help nonprofits increase income and become fully funded. As somebody who has helped to lead a nonprofit, teaching leaders of nonprofits, what would you say are some lessons in the area of fundraising and development that you've learned over the years that you'd love to impart to our viewers? Lessons learned. I like to say you have to set the pace. Oftentimes we feel kind of compressed by the urgency of what our needs are, you know, because we, we are helping people. I mean, some of these nonprofits that we're working with are literally saving lives, right? And so that revenue is so important to do that. And so we feel that urgency and it makes us want to scurry and act fast. But sometimes we just need to slow down and be strategic and set a pace because we're not running a sprint here. I like to say leadership, especially nonprofit leadership, is not a marathon, as some people say it is, but it's not a sprint. I like to say it's a marathon of sprints because you're going to you're going for the long haul, right? You're going to have to hustle some to catch up every now and then or get ahead, but you you can't only sprint. Uh, you will burn out. And with your fundraising in particular, you don't want to burn out your donors either, right? And so uh, one of the things is to, as I said, change your mindset and reframe it to value-based thinking, number one, a relational thinking. Number two is to set a pace that is a long-term accomplishment, not just a short-term. You're going to have, you're going to be able to jump some hurdles, right? And that's your short-term celebrations, but you're in this for the long game. And so you want to be able to set a pace that you can actually get there and have longevity in what you're doing. Um, besides that, I think really thanking people quickly is so important. Asking bigger, uh, asking in such a way that it scares you. Uh, one of the one of the early lessons one of my mentors taught me in nonprofit was uh, someone had given what I thought was a large gift, like ten thousand dollars. I thought that was a large gift at the time for the organization we were with. And uh, my mentor said, "Well, what had they given before?" And I didn't know. I hadn't looked it up. And he said, "Well." You know, did he hesitate when you asked? I was like, oh, no, I was so proud. Oh, no, he was eager. He wrote that check. And he was like, yeah, you should have asked for more then. Next time you should ask for more. And you should always know what check they wrote last time before you ask for the next gift. Because whatever they give you the first time without a lot of pressure is not their best gift, typically. Typically, that is a building trust gift. They want to see how you're going to steward that gift before they give you their best gift. But it does take a lot of courage to ask for the best gift. On the other side of that, you have to thank them very quickly for that and inform them what did that gift empower your nonprofit to do so that they want to give a bigger gift, a better gift, as they're blessed to be able to do that. So I would say that th those are the, the big lessons I've learned. Right. Well, what would you say to our audience, our viewers that say, I really enjoy what I've heard from Dr. Cornell. What kinds of services, how could you help a nonprofit leader who is, is looking for someone to come alongside and, you know, give them some wise counsel, give them some advice, help to mentor them in leadership and branding and marketing? Yeah, thank you for um, inviting that. So uh, you can find me on almost every social area with uh, the handle Dr. Sheila Cornea. And um, 
that's mostly I'm going to be active on Instagram or LinkedIn, but I show up in other places as uh, even Clubhouse every now and then, but not very frequently. Um, I'm usually, if you want to drop me a message, Instagram's your best bet there to get, get my attention. Um, I do have um, a, a link that can lead to if anyone wants to do just like a 15 or 20 minute pick my brain session kind of a thing. It's just a free call if you want to know more about how I work with organizations or if you just are trying to clear some cobwebs on one item and you just want to talk through it, I'd be happy to do that for your listeners. So um, you can go to docshe, D-O-C-S-H-E dot com slash L-E-A-D. And that's just going to take you to a, a place where you can set up a call and uh, we'll talk about, uh, there's four key areas that I like to run through with leaders, um, the acronym LEAD. You'll learn all about it if you go to that page, and then um, we can talk about some things that might be um, your hot button right now, and if there's any other way or resources, whether they're mine or someone else's that I can direct you to, I'd be happy to do that. You've given us some great applicable principles to implement. Uh, I just appreciate so much, and we'll make sure that on the screen and in the description below, we'll put all your contact information, all the, the different sources and things like that. So we'll, we'll take care of that. So uh, any uh, parting, any ending uh, statements or comments you'd love to leave with our viewers before we sign off? Well, listen, for nonprofit leaders, uh, and you included because you're empowering them and equipping them, you know, the work you're doing is so valuable and significant. And sometimes the world tells us that we're not as successful because we don't always mark success in the same way. But if you are making a significant mark in this world and that's how you define success like I do, and I'm guessing you do too, Jim, then um, stay in it. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Keep doing what you're doing because you are, you're someone's Miss Linda. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that message by Dr. Sheila Cornea. Sheila has brought some great nuggets, some great tips. I especially appreciated her emphasis on recruiting and training up board members who we oftentimes forget are also leaders in our organization, not just our staff. So Sheila, thank you for that message you bring. I hope you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did, give it a thumbs up and be sure to put a comment in the comment section. If you need to reach out to me, please do so at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications for future videos like this. And also, if you've got questions or comments, uh, you can use Twitter. Our hashtag is Jim and Java and reach us at devfstrats. Don't be afraid to check out our Instagram site as well at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. And as always, I we are here to help you increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.